I'm Doug. And I'm Kathy. And, and this, this is, is Maggie, Maggie May. May. Join us as we follow the moon. We are starting off our tour of Waco, Texas this morning. And what a better way to start off, but with a great breakfast. Oh my goodness, yes. So we are here at the Waco Waffle Company and a whole lot of things going on around here that we'll show you too. But come along and enjoy our day in Waco, Texas. Thanks. Now the Waco Waffle Company is just on the outskirts of town in a beautiful little community. What an adorable little building. Oh yeah, it is a working water wheel out there. And the nice thing is, it is located right at the end of the dining room with a glass wall. That's right. Great menu, they have waffles, sandwiches. They're only open in the early part of the day, I think up until 2.30. And uh, this is what Kathy got. Hers was peaches, bananas, whipped cream. Hers was in the sweets. Maggie wanted some. <laughs> Mine was in the savories. It had a jalapeno cheddar waffle, brisket, uh, pickled onions. It was incredible. Yeah. Right out back, there are peach trees growing. We set out on the outdoor deck behind it. They had cornhole set up. And directly behind it is another little area that has the Mohawk Valley Inn. That was actually from New York State and was disassembled and brought here, uh, as were a lot of these buildings that had been moved from across the country. There's a coffee shop. This is a cheese shop on the right, and right across is the Cheese Cave. And the Cheese Cave, you can go down the stairs, they make one turn, and go on down into the basement where it is cool as can be. And in you, more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> and you can look through the glass and see all the wheels of cheese in there that are aging. Everything that you see, they make here on the premises. There's also uh, a general store and their market. And these are all right up at the front. Any of these things that you want to see, use the address that we used for the uh, Waco Waffle Company. It'll take you to all of them. Right behind those are the Homestead Heritage Site. The cafe is incredible. They said if you go on the weekend, be sure and make reservations. <clears throat> then you have the Craft Barn. This is all handcrafts. These things are made all in this community. This barn too was also moved uh, onto the site. And you can go upstairs into the loft. There's more things to see up there. There's a little history on the barn itself that was moved here onto the property. Now the next building up is the leather work. Oh, it smelled so good in there. I know. <laughs> it smelled incredible. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. There also is a glass works right there beside them that was closed the time we were there. The next building down is pottery. And like I said, they make it on the premises. You'll see them back here getting ready to uh, start spinning some more of those little pots. I can be dangerous in these places. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so much fun to watch. It's not just that they are selling the crafts that they're making there, but this is the woodworking shop and they do woodworking classes you can buy kits and kids as young as 12 years old can go in there and learn how to put things together. They had sailboat kits. And there was a beautiful sideboard in the store that was made by a couple of 16 year olds. Mm -hmm. it was, and you wouldn't believe it was made by 16 year olds if you saw it. It was so beautiful. Now you go just across the, the little creek area there and you'll come to the grist mill. And there you can see the uh, 
the race taking the water to the, the wheel. There's where the water comes out. They sell all the, the products there that they, they grind there in the grist mill. There's a little tea room and you can see the, the inner workings of the belts and everything that drive the grist wheel over there. And as it's turning, it's turning the, the flour out into the bucket and you can see the, the water powering the wheel right through the window. Mm -hmm. This whole area was just so neat. It was, it had a very peaceful vibe to yes. it. Yes. It was a great area. Now this one is Fiber Crafts, and this is the looms. They actually make all of the uh, towels and, and linen things yeah. that you see. Scarves and They're all made shawls and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. on site. They spin the yarn. Mm -hmm. And they, again, were showing kids how to, to thread the shuttle through mm -hmm. and, and, and weave on those. All That's different really sizes. Really neat. And they're so friendly. They mm -hmm. just want to tell you everything about it. It's it's really nice. You want to plan to spend a good portion of a day there. Absolutely. Now you'll come across this last little building over here and it's all baskets. And they even sell kits to make so your you own. Make your own, that's right. And again, the homestead cabin was moved here on the site. Now the front sign actually said there was a, a blacksmith. blacksmith, but it must be back at the back where the school is mm -hmm. because we didn't actually make it back there. Now, Waco Mammoth National Monument, not something you normally associate with Waco. Not at all. But this is a great site. It is very easy to get to. It's a very short walk to get to the dig site. Uh, and it's something you can see and not have to spend a lot of time at, but it's definitely a worthwhile stop. And they do um, guided tours or you can do self tours. We did the self tour. Uh, National Park Pass does not apply here because there's no charge for parking or anything. Seniors, it was $5 admission. I think adults was six. And so worth it too. You'll see this big building ahead of you on the path. And this building is just designed to cover the dig site. Yeah. That gives you an idea of what a Columbian mammoth looks like. They are, the size, yeah. yeah. They're around 14 foot tall. They lived about 65,000 years ago is when they feel this site was created when these these were stuck in the mud. Those uh, horns, the tusks on the males, can be up to 200 pounds and can be 10 to 14 foot long. And this is not a real old dig. No, they only found this in, I believe, 1978. Yeah. But it's all preserved and under roof. It's, it's, it's great. It's fascinating. There's a saber tooth type tiger tooth yeah. down there in amongst the what they found. And I think they said they found 23 different mammoth mm -hmm. sets of uh, bones. There's a human femur and a mammoth femur side by side. Now we also stopped just outside of town at the Mount Carmel Center. And Mount Carmel Center was the home of the Branch Davidians. This is where this, this tragedy took place back in 1993. And it all started in February 28th of 1993 when the ATF stormed this to serve a search warrant because it was suspected that they had a massive amount of artillery. But rather than just serving the, the warrant, they stormed it. A gun sight ensued mm -hmm. and they did release some of the children, but eventually 51 days later, April the 19th of 1993, I'm sorry, 51 days later, 
there were uh, a massive gunfight which ensued into a fire and 76 Branch Davidians, 19 men, 34 women, and 23 children all perished in the fire. Now this chapel has been rebuilt on the site of the original chapel in the compound. They have on the walls, this is a couple that founded the church that was later taken over by um, David Koresh. And these are pictures of the people who perished in the fire. What a tragedy. It could have all went down very differently than what it did. This is an area where women and children were in that area and were gassed to death. You'll see the concrete foundations of where some of the buildings were. And this was a big complex. Yeah, and this is where their swimming pool was, still standing. Next up, we're into Waco, Texas, and this is the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum. And this was an area we didn't have the time to necessarily stop and go through the museum, but the grounds were pretty interesting just on their own. Yeah. And this is right at where the um, visitor center is for Waco. Yes, yeah, the visitor center is right here on the property. That is a uh, statue of the father of Waco, who was a Texas Ranger. It's a busy, busy spot, definitely to be on, on your bucket list. And it's right on the river, the Brazos River, looking over McLean Stadium. <laughs> Right beside that, because of McLean Stadium, is the Baylor University. Baylor University is the world's largest Baptist university. Beautiful campus. But their mascot is the bear. And they have a bear habitat right there with a bear couple, Indy and Belle. And as bears do on a warm afternoon, they like to lounge. So you go up to the window and you look and you don't see anything until you look down. And there was one of them. I'm not sure if that's Indy or Belle. Right by the window. The other one's hanging out on this rock. And I love the position. The rock was probably cool. <laughs> but they were both hanging out right there in that area. Now parking in that area is a little challenging. It's on the university property, so be patient for parking. Now we brought you a video all about Magnolia on our last trip through Waco, but we had to stop back at the Silo Bakery. That's right. For obvious reasons. <laughs> you... Something about lavender and lemon. Mm -hmm. That is their menu of what they have. And they do have a few seasonal things that they add. We got a cinnamon roll. We got that biscuit that had bacon and chives. Oh, and, it was good. And a couple of, of lemon lavender cupcakes. And they are incredible. It was about a half hour line getting in, but worth it. Is that all that was? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Pepper Museum is also here. And it was pretty well packed the day we were there. It's an old historic building and they have the entire history of Dr. Pepper there. That is the Texas drink. Doesn't matter where you go, if they serve Coke products or if they serve Pepsi, they probably serve Dr. Pepper in addition. That's right. In the gift shop, anything and everything with the Dr. Pepper logo on it. Now this is the Hotel 1928. And if you follow Chip and Joanna Gaines, this was their hotel project that they did. And beautiful, beautifully restored building. The dining area is thick marble tables. Um, it's the architecture is amazing. Yeah, it's a very elegant looking building. This is what you see when you go in. They have valet parking all around. And 
they have just inside the door a couple of pictures of what Waco once looked like. So Kathy, what did you think about this beautiful spring day in Waco, Texas? It's obviously beautiful. I love it here. It's, Waco is never disappointed, and especially this time. We hope you've enjoyed what we brought you today. If you have, leave us a thumbs up. We certainly appreciate it. At the end, you'll see a button appear over in that corner of the screen. If you haven't already subscribed, tap that and ring the notification bell, and that way you'll know where all of our travels take us and bring you along with us. And thank you for following us as we follow the moon.